Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Retroactive Let's Play. I'm Kevin, and this week we're playing Kirby's Dreamland. So if you had seen my review just a couple uh, days ago, or maybe about a week ago by the time I actually put this out, uh, yeah, I just reviewed this whole thing, kind of did if some people called the mini retrospective. Uh, and this is the very first Kirby game to ever be released. It was released on the Game Boy in 1992, August of 92 actually. And I'm going to go through a little bit, play about, it takes about 20 whole minutes to play through this game from start to back. Real simple, fun. Uh, if you've never actually played the original Kirby title, uh, it's quite simplistic in comparison, actually. It's kind of weird. Oh, man, I should have changed my controller scheme, but it'll work. <laughs> Keep pressing everything wrong. So yeah, no, he does not have any kind of like power-ups in the very first Kirby's Dream Land. You have the ability to suck some stuff in and blow it back out. That's it. All right, that's, there we go. I'm used to every SNES game defaulting because I, if you didn't notice, I'm playing this on the Super Game Boy. <laughs> so I'm playing it through my Super Nintendo. I'm used to every, you know, Super Nintendo game defaulting to, you know, the B and Y button. And I guess at some point either I changed it or I didn't change it before this game, I don't recall, but it's still like classic NES, you know, A and A and B. So <laughs> just playing on a controller thinking one way and doing another. Anyway. Yeah, so very simplistic take on Kirby. The very first one, you know, not surprising. August 92, like I said. He has the ability to suck in an enemy and blow him out. He can also fly by holding up, which is kind of a weird mechanic. I touched on that in my video. Uh, they didn't change that until Kirby Superstar and the Super Nintendo, if I recall correctly. Um, and at that point, he had more of a double jump type mechanic. Uh, and it's not like completely awkward. I mean, you press up and he just goes straight up. If you need to like more hover, you know, you can kind of do a little clip and do like that. Just a little float mechanic. Press it gently and let him sit there and do that. But it's just kind of, it's just a weird thing to do when it's not necessary, I guess, is how I always felt about it. So that is a M. I always want to call them mushrooms because it's got a giant M on it. It's so nondescript uh, little design there. But I believe it, it is a tomato. And they made it tomatoes later and stuff like that. And that will refill your life all the way. So here's our first boss, Wispy Woods. Probably the most classic Kirby boss of all time. For most of my childhood, I assumed you had to hit him in the nose because it was like the only thing that seemed to like really, <laughs> I don't know. I just, I made that connection one time and maybe because it just juts out of his whole like character and the rest is so much of his background that I always thought I had to jump up, hit him in the nose. Obviously you don't have to do that. You hit him wherever you want. Very easy boss. All this is very simple. Like I said, 20 minutes, 25 tops of me goofing around and showing you some other stuff. That's it. So Castle Lolo Lo is stage two. This has the uh, little distinction of having a cameo from Hal's only other really major title at the time called uh, Adventures of Lolo. And they become the stage boss here, Lolo and Lala of that game. Which is funny to me, yeah, like, you know, Hal at this point had made, I mean, they had made a few other games, but those are really the two that mattered. Uh, and they're both featured a just round little character with big eyes and a solid color and you know little like slipper like feet They definitely had a pattern at that time There are some side areas. I could have gone in in that point. I just didn't oh and <laughs> Just wasn't registering my button press there the suck in the box So this is uh, this is Lolo from Adventures of Lolo obviously, but that is only the little side boss we still got to face him and his girlfriend, Lala, here soon. Again, there's more up here. I'll just show it to you. Why not? We got plenty of time. Don't need any of it, though. There's just like this little, uh, these little canisters, these little water bottles they look like, or a little health. And this is a power-up. Gives you like infinite hot breath, basically. Kirby, Kirby's got some stinky breath now. He's just going to fire away and beat all these guys. Hey, you come back here. There we go. That's it. Really not necessary at all. And a lot of it's like that. They they added some extra stuff in here to kind of, I guess, give it a little exploration feel, but it's very unnecessary, especially considering how easy this game is. I don't necessarily need to, you know, go off and look for power-ups and things like that very often. 
right, here we go. Here's the first uh, low, or I'm sorry, not the first, obviously, we already had the last. So here's our second boss and the fight with Lolo and Lala. Just keep sucking in boxes and shooting them out. We got Lolo first. And get rid of Lala next. Three more, or two more. Yeah, the Kirby's little breath thing doesn't work. Gotta use the boxes. There we go. Yeah, nice and simple. Just pushing boxes around. <laughs> Kirby comes into their home and just, you know, disrupts their daily work routine for some reason just to get to the end boss. <laughs> All right, next, uh, next one's Float Islands. A little tropical theme. Kirby hooked his own mouth because he's a glutton and had to suck in the fish he caught. <laughs> I want to say that little clam guy is really like the only one in here that's kind of reminiscent of, you know, the later characters. Oh, no, there he is. So he's really the only one, I should say. Him and the uh, first, like, mid-stage boss you fight that, you know, throws bombs at you. Um, they're the only two that are kind of similar to what, you know, some of the enemies we got later in Kirby's Adventure and Superstar and all that kind of stuff, Dreamland 2, where he could absorb powers and, you know, have the little laser beam or the bombs and all that kind of stuff. Most of the other characters don't show up until later later titles. Uh, for here, we mostly have just, like, little, just nondescript kind of animalish characters. These little totem guys... You know, snails, things like that. I really need to get a new Super Nintendo controller or refurb this one all the way, finally. <laughs> it's really easy for me to accidentally press up on my controller uh, without intending to. It's all my pads are very squishy, which isn't surprising. I, this is an original. It's been through hell. I don't even know. This isn't even original to me, so it's secondhand <laughs> on top of that. And I've been playing it in... Pfft, I don't know, probably 10 years as it is, so. It's time for a full refurb on that. Little one up, not that I need it, but I'm gonna take it. Ah, I hate those little guys. They, they seem like they've spawned all the way and they certainly have it and just get hit by them instead. Yeah, so Kirby can do some damage if you hadn't noticed with his just breath when he inflates himself. Uh, it can come in handy as kind of a little way to uh, you know, get some enemies like that and stuff like that out of your way. Got another little tomato. I always thought they also kind of look like ladybugs in this first one. Gotta love some of those old, you know, sprite graphics where they're just kind of very nondescript, like, things. You're like, what is that supposed to be? Especially power-ups. Characters are usually, were, you know, pretty distinguishable and stuff like that. But a lot of power-ups, you just kind of look at them and you're like, is that, what is that? What am I looking at here? Another water bottle and a one-up. I'm going to keep calling them water bottles. I actually don't remember right now what they're actually called. <laughs> you know, but Kirby, Kirby needs to hydrate. That's how, he, that's how he heals himself. It's a great way to stay in shape. Make sure you're hydrated. <laughs> Jump on one of the superstars here and fly out. Warp star, I should say. I love all the character that is in this game. It may be just ridiculously short and super simple, but I mean, it's just cute as can be for, you know, an, an early portable title. You know, the the Game Boy had really only really began to pick up by this point. Yeah, and of course, you know, this, this, is, uh, this was actually cut out of Superstar. I mentioned that in my little video. Um, for some reason, I'm not sure why they did that. You know, that this game is not long enough, in my opinion, to cut any content out, even if it's a part of a compilation. Um, but it's it's really interesting that they just suddenly made this a little side scroller, a little side scrolling shooter. I love his little dance. Like I said, I mean, there's just so much character here. It may be super short and easy, uh, you know. And the Game Boy had really only started to get very, you know, dense titles and action titles and stuff like that by now. And a couple months from here, we'll get, you know, Super Mario Land 2 and stuff like that. But, you know, they go for the, like, a little bit shorter, super portable style. But they gave it so much character and, you know, just wonderful animation and design. And the soundtrack is, you know, 
one of the most iconic soundtracks of you know the 8-bit 16-bit era and kirby soundtracks went on to become just beautifully composed and iconic all through the lifespan of nintendo and stuff like that it's crazy how much this very simple game became such a catalyst for you know a franchise for nintendo and hal and just how big kirby got from something that's just so archaic Oops, hit by his little explosion. If you try to suck those guys up, you can't. They'll just chase you instead. So you gotta kinda get him to the side. And I was wrong, I forgot the Sir Kibble, as he's known later, is in this as a enemy. So that's another one that later shows up and you can absorb him and become a cutter, is what they called it, which I always thought was such a interesting uh, choice <laughs> for a name, the cutter. Uh, where he throws like, yeah, like little little swords. There is, I want to say there is something over here, a little secret. Yeah, I can slip in here. Press up. There we go. Continue a little, making a little side scrolling shooter section for no reason. Grab another little tomato, refill. Again, really almost no point to this. I don't need to fight most of those people. But yeah, that takes us straight to the boss instead. Oops. Oh, man. Just once again. Come on. Help me out here. Help me out here, controller. Whew. It's weird for being, you know, I mean, on the Game Boy, these are very nice, you know, pixel art and stuff like that. And the backgrounds are very detailed. But it's crazy to me still with how little's on screen sometimes, how much there is a little bit of a slowdown here and there and stuff. All right. It's also weird to me that the power-up gives you all that, um, you know, the kind of infinite hot breath, as I like to call it, but it doesn't actually provide you any protection. None of the power-ups in uh, Kirby, I believe, provide you any protection. They just give you, like, infinite breath, and one of them makes you fly, and one of them doesn't, and that's basically what that is. The little, the one that kind of looks like a lollipop or something like that is kind of, yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't make you fly or anything like that. It just gives you the infinite hot breath, and the one that looks like a... Uh, I'm gonna call it a yam, the giant yam. That one uh, makes you fly permanently. Oop, ah, got stuck on that floor there. All right, here's our final boss, Cracko. Uh, Cracko is another one that became iconic. You know, we, we basically lose everybody. We lose Lolo and Lala, and uh, we lose um, the warship thing, Blimp with a cannon on it, I guess. Um, in all future, maybe not all future, but most of the uh, Kirby games from here on out. But Cracko and Wispy Woods, and obviously King DDD at the end here, are, you know, iconic characters. They, they're they pretty much a multitude, if not almost all Kirby games at some point in time. There we go. Another adorable, adorable dance. There's nothing better than Kirby's little dances in all of them. <laughs> Love the little dance scenes. All right, so here we go. So this is the final boss. Uh, we're going to Mount DDD, uh, the fight King DDD. So if you didn't know the story of this, King DDD stole all the food in Dreamland. So, you know, they all get together and Kirby is the, you know, brave little soldier guy who's just like, no, nah, I'll go get it all back. So we gotta go there and we gotta defeat King DDD. Um, in the remake Kirby Superstar, you actually don't have this section. So you have a little boss rush here to kind of pad it out. Obviously it's, all, it's very short, like I said a hundred times now. Uh, and so they do these kind of like little mini versions of the levels and then you fight the boss again. Oops, well I pressed up. It just didn't think I did. <laughs> Let's try that again. Actually saw me die. It's very uncommon playing through Kirby. Actually, actually die a little bit. 
There we go. That's what I get for trying to rush it and not just, you know, fly over the whole thing. And I always thought this was weird. You have to, like, pick up your weird, like, doppelganger self. And that unlocks it. <laughs> just sitting there doing a little dance. Just shuffling back and forth. Being cute. I like how they kept the stage song going for the boss rush, though. So you can hear just a little bit of those fun little stage scenes again. And uh, instead of switching to the boss music again. The bosses also kind of seem a little easier in this boss rush. Like, yeah, he shot at me once out of all that. <laughs> uh, let's do them out of order just for fun. So I'll go here and do this guy. In later Kirby games, if you absorb two characters at a time, you either get a more like kind of bigger star or if they have powers you can actually get like a roulette thing and it'll kind of mix powers and kind of give you one at random and obviously this one just doesn't do anything you just happen to suck up two enemies almost come on Not actually sure what, how many hits it is per like little slice of his life. I never actually counted that. All right, let's let's do Lolo and Lala. Go through the castle real quick, which is basically just flying straight up, shooting that guy. <laughs> Get into the door. Yeah, I think you can fly over all of that. You don't need to worry about any of it. There we go. Come on, go through the door. Don't fly. Go through the door. Ah. Oh, I swallowed it. <laughs> oh. Give me that box. It's interesting, too. They only have one life bar, but they obviously have separate life bars. And uh, you because you have to hit each one of them three times, even though it just chunks off one whole life. You can't just doesn't just do it randomly. Each one of them is three. Here we go. And Cracko. Finish him out. Oops. Kirby will almost kind of, yeah, like land on characters if he's made that full, you know, face down prone thing. If he's falling, he will hit them and it just destroys them. Except obviously when they explode. <laughs> he's not invulnerable, I guess, to explosions. Keep up our little dance here. Jump over him. Wait for him to do his little thing. Spit out a little guy. Basically, if you're right here... Oop, I should not have done that. Basically, if you're right here at the end of this like little bench thing, his little uh, laser beams can't hit you. His little electrical beams. And that gives you a pretty good chance to make a jump over his arc, too. You just got to be careful with him spitting people out. Come on. It's very touchy about how far Kirby can be away to suck up of an enemy and there is some of that air but it's not exact there we go so down with everybody and king dd dd -D. <laughs> king dd -D -D is last so he's a little bit of a butt it takes a while he's got the huge life bar as you can see and you just got to kind of avoid most of his attacks um the jump is the easiest one hammer you can kind of do but you got to be careful He's not necessarily as uh, accurate as you think he would be, or not accurate, but um, it's not easy to exactly tell wh where he'll stop and hit that hammer down. You gotta kinda, yeah, see, he even kinda chased me that time. Oh man, I've only got one left. I might might see two deaths in this one. Just so I can come back and try again here. Come on, do a jump. Ugh. There we go. And he does this little dive thing that's just, yeah, all you can do is jump over it, hover over it, anything. I don't think you can actually jump over him. At least I've never been very good at getting that to happen. Yeah, see, he chased me again all the way. I touched his hammer on the way back. 
So yeah, he's like the most complicated boss because he doesn't necessarily do what you think he would. Yeah, like, again, he, I was real close to him. You think he would hammer down and hit you, but he kind of doesn't. Like, he'll if he decides to, he'll just chase you. And again, I pressed up on accident. Ah, oh, twice. Come on, give it to me. We're off to, we're doing good with King DDD here. Come on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me those. Keep, I keep guessing all of his moves incorrectly here. Give that to me. Frustrating King DDD. King DDD. I'm all tongue tied this morning. I can't say his name. DDD. Yeah, you see, in later titles, if I had sucked in both of those, um, it would have been a little stronger of attack. Um, possibly taken two off of him. Not always. Uh, but yeah, this one, it doesn't matter. If he uh, sucks you in, he will shoot you across the whole thing and take a pretty good chunk off your life, I'm pretty sure. No star that time. <sighs> Come on. Got to get out of here. Nope, that'll hurt. Oh, you're so tedious. Come on. There we go. <laughs> All right, two more. We're almost there. To the home stretch. And one more DDD. We got you. You're not going to make it out of here. You're going to give all of our food back. I'm hungry. <laughs> There he goes. <laughs> Let me just flies out of the whole thing. All right, so that's it. That is the entire game of Kirby's Dreamland. Nice, simple, perfect. Always a treat to play. I love this game. Um, even though it's, like I said, very archaic, it's very simple, especially compared to even later Kirby games. Um, but it's just, it just has that perfect amount of charm. It's just super fun. Oh, yeah, so Kirby... Blows them up super size and takes the whole castle away and redistributes the uh, food across the land. And that's it for this episode. So thanks again so much for watching this episode of Retroactive. I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, there is a second round that you can play in this. It makes things harder. I'm not a big fan of it, even though I love this game. And it's cool that they gave you a second round um, with harder enemies, kind of like, you know, the um, Super Mario Brothers type thing where the little different enemies a little harder stuff like that but it's just kind of a bombastic thing they didn't actually like in my opinion like level it up they just kind of threw a bunch of stuff in there and made it kind of a weird challenge uh so i don't know if i'll come back and do that i might just give it a shot but for now that's all this episode again thanks so much for watching i'll see you next time i'm gonna let the credits roll